Did you learn all this? Hello, this is Max. A teapot that has the ability to generate money falls into the hands of a family, transforming them into millionaires. You can subscribe to the channel after watching. It helps us a lot in realizing the content. The movie begins by introducing John and Alice, a seemingly ordinary couple who wake up together each morning. John heads to work, attempting to sell insurance over the phone, but he faces pressure from his demanding supervisor, who expects better results. John attributes his poor performance to their difficult financial situation, but his supervisor remains unsympathetic. Meanwhile, Alice has a job interview but is rejected due to her lack of experience and a master's degree compared to other applicants. Their arrogant landlord demands rent payment, further stressing the couple. Alice checks their e-banking statement and sees their balance is minus $45 after paying the rent. That night, John and Alice attend a reunion party with former schoolmates who appear happy and successful. They feel out of place due to their attire, but eventually meet another struggling couple, friends of theirs, with whom they discuss their problems. The silver lining is that the drinks are free, allowing them to enjoy the party. The next morning, the couple decides to go shopping since their fridge remains empty. While driving on suburban roads, their car collides with a truck at a crossroads with a missing stop sign. Are you okay? Yeah. Fortunately, they are unharmed but must wait for the police to arrive and document the accident. Nearby, there's an antique shop run by an old lady. Alice notices the old lady picking up a golden teapot and follows her inside the shop. Alice engages in a brief conversation with the old lady, who becomes distracted by the phone. Alice, drawn to the teapot, touches it and becomes captivated. She takes the teapot and rushes back to her husband's car, urging him to drive quickly. John is surprised by his wife's theft, but is told the item is so pretty. While Alice books a job interview over the phone, she straightens her hair. Accidentally burning her forehead with a hair straightener causes the teapot to tremble. As her phone slips from her hand, she approaches the teapot and discovers it contains dollars. She realizes that hurting herself results in the teapot producing money. Alice intentionally burns her forehead again, and the teapot trembles, producing $700. To confirm her theory, she kicks a chair and injures her foot and fingers, resulting in more money from the teapot, coinciding with John losing his job. John comes home to find the living room in shambles and his wife on the verge of fainting. Alice assures him she's okay. He shares the news of his job loss and she responds with indifference. She hands him the teapot and John senses an unusual vibration. Alice surprises him with a slap and reveals the money the teapot has generated. She explains that the teapot rewards them for self-inflicted harm. John is initially skeptical, but after Alice delivers a powerful blow to his groin, the teapot spews money. Although John briefly contemplates returning the teapot to the antique shop, he ultimately becomes enthralled by its money-making potential. John takes the teapot to a cash or trash TV show, where the host appraises it at $5,000, but John declines the offer. Meanwhile, an Asian middle-aged man watches the show with keen interest and pinpoints John's location on a map. John and Alice agree to amass $1 million from the teapot and then quit. They subject themselves to painful ordeals to accumulate cash but also indulge in unconventional pleasures, pleasing the teapot. You learn all this? Their newfound wealth and improved mood become evident at a family lunch, where Alice's mother and sister are perplexed by their sudden prosperity given John's previous reliance on a modest salesman's salary. However, their fortune take a dark turn when two men disguised as rabbis invade their home, demanding the teapot, a cherished family heirloom their late grandmother couldn't trust without. Alice hides the teapot under a pillow and claims they've already sold it. The rabbis insist on receiving the proceeds from the teapot's sale. Alice, demonstrating cunning, quickly retrieves the money generated by the teapot due to John's beating and hands it over to the rabbis. The couple decides to research the teapot further, feeling alarmed after their encounter with the rabbis. They visit a library and find a book about mythical magical objects. Alice discovers a page illustrating the dire consequences of using the teapot but tears it off before John can see it. For a while, they live a dream life, purchasing a new car, a luxurious house in an affluent neighborhood upgrading their wardrobe, and hosting parties with high-profile guests. 
Their peaceful life takes a turn when an Asian man named Li Ling, claiming to be from the Theosophical community and interested in ancient artifacts, visits their home. John is open to listening to him, but Alice is adamant about holding onto the teapot, fearing the consequences of losing it. Li Ling warns them that they are in great danger, but the couple dismisses his warning and shuts the door on him. Shortly after, their former landlord, Arnie, pays them an uninvited visit. Arnie, who is intoxicated, questions how they, whom he views as losers, could afford to live in such a nice neighborhood. Hold that. In a drunken stupor, he takes the teapot from them and runs outside with it. Come on. John attempts to retrieve it, but the teapot ends up in the middle of the road. Arnie then drives his truck over the teapot, but to their astonishment, it remains undamaged, without a scratch. Ellis is relieved but also puzzled by the teapot's resilience. They decide to visit Li Ling to inquire about the teapot and its seemingly indestructible nature. Li Ling explains that the teapot cannot be destroyed, and the only way to get rid of it is to hide it so that it can never be found again. He shares the teapot's history, which has passed through the hands of both great and terrible individuals throughout time. Lee warns them that the teapot has the power to amplify any existing evil within a person, and he recounts a historical incident involving the teapot in a Nazi camp. Despite Lee's warnings, Alice convinces John not to hand over the teapot. She argues that they are inherently good people and won't lose control of themselves. Their struggles continue, but one night, the two rabbis who had previously assaulted them break into their house and steal their money while they sleep. The rabbis reveal that they are not interested in the teapot itself, having witnessed its destructive effects on their grandmother. Instead, they let John and Alice bear the pain and generate wealth for them, focusing solely on the money. A confrontation ensues, resulting in John and Alice being rendered unconscious. With their finances dwindling and the teapot yielding less money, John and Alice decide to seek help. They visit a biker's bar and inquire about the meanest person there. The bartender points them to the right individual, and John starts a fight with him while carrying the bag containing the teapot, hoping for a profitable return. As John is injured and Lee approaches him, Lee reiterates his warning that the teapot is consuming both him and Alice. You don't look so good. Meanwhile, Alice makes a startling discovery. The teapot can produce money not only when they hurt themselves, but also when others are in pain. Alice shares this newfound knowledge with John, and they begin attending events where people experience pain to assist the teapot in generating money. This includes events like MMA fights and even childbirth. However, the teapot's influence is increasingly consuming Alice's soul. While driving with John as her passenger, Alice reflects on the world's abundance of pain. She becomes deeply absorbed in her thoughts and in a disturbing turn of events, deliberately accelerates the car with the intention of running over a homeless man crossing the road. In a moment of crisis, John manages to intervene just in time, steering the wheel and saving the homeless man from Alice's intended harm. This action prevents a potential murder and sparks a heated argument between the couple. Alice accuses John of being incooperative and failing to understand her perspective. During their argument, Alice makes another revelation. The teapot can generate money from emotional pain as well. To test her theory, she begins insulting John, aiming to emotionally hurt him. Ouch. It turns out she is correct. The teapot produces money in response to emotional pain. Alice then insists that John emotionally hurts her as well. Initially reluctant, John complies with Alice's request and shares a past incident when he kissed another woman and occasionally thinks about that kiss when he kisses Alice. This revelation results in a significant monetary gain from the teapot. As they engage in their money-generating scheme of insulting each other and sharing dark secrets to produce emotional pain, Alice reflects on the newfound honesty in their relationship. However, they eventually decide to shift their focus from hurting each other to exposing other people's secrets to their loved ones in exchange for money. They contemplate revealing a significant secret about Alice's sister, but Alice has a change of heart and decides not to go through with it. Back at home, John reassures Alice that she is a good person for not exposing her sister, but Alice believes that a remorse will slow down their progress. She proposes one final significant stunt to reach their goal of $1 million, involving harming someone she perceives as harmful to society. John is hesitant about this plan but feels compelled to go along with it to please his wife. 
They take the plan as far as digging a grave, but John becomes resolute about stopping. He no longer wants to participate in harming others for financial gain, and it seems he's willing to confront Alice about the moral consequences of their actions. John confronts Alice about their situation and asks her to choose between him and the teapot. Alice remains silent, and John, feeling disheartened, decides to leave. He seeks help from Leeling, who explains that it's too late to simply steal the teapot. They must willingly give it to him. Later that night, Alice finds John sitting on a window ledge on the second floor, contemplating an unthinkable act. He pleads with her to give up the teapot after he's gone, but Alice begs him not to jump. When John does jump, Alice is devastated, but he miraculously survives the fall. John wakes up and asks Alice if she's now willing to hand over the teapot to Lee. She agrees, but there's another complication. During the same night, they hear a noise downstairs and discover that the teapot has been stolen. Arnie, their former landlord, has taken it, suspecting its mysterious abilities. John and Alice head to his place to retrieve it since they are obligated to return the teapot to Lee. A confrontation ensues among the four. Give me the, teapot and I might you the two rabbis are pulled into the fray, having been attracted by the teapot. Alice remembers they made contact with the teapot when they invaded their home and took their money. Fortunately, with the aid of firearms, John and Alice watch as everyone else neutralizes each other. With no more obstacles, John and Alice are able to return the teapot to Lee, which they promptly do. Thank you. Lee commends them. He mentions that past monarchs were unable to resist the power of the teapot, but John and Alice succeeded in overcoming its influence. If you are interested in such films, please proceed to the next video on the screen and also share your thoughts about this film in the comments. Give us a like and subscribe. Goodbye.